Happy New Year's Eve, everybody. Happy New Year's Eve 2020. They say you gotta look backwards to look forward here on Jay's Chronicles. We're gonna take a look back as we look at the vision for 2020 and take those accomplishments to help fuel us and navigate us through 2021. Come join us. Ooh, I'm feeling so clean tonight. Happy New Year's Eve, everybody. Let's get this going. What's up, family? How you doing? I know it's been a few weeks since you last seen me. I was transitioning to my new spot here. I hope you like this new spot that I picked up. I love it. I'm owning this spot. It's feeling really nice and comfortable how we've renovated it. But let's talk about our vision 2020 and some of those accomplishments that we made to help fuel us for 2021. I look back the first quarter, start of the journey in 2020, heading to Africa with some of my closest friends. I was at the highest moment. It was so awesome to go back to the motherland and figure out my roots and understand where I came from. It meant a lot to me. But then I came back to a whole nother situation. Four weeks later, Ronald McDonald told me goodbye. And then shortly after that, so did my girl. And so it was like, wow, welcome to 2020. And then the month later, COVID hit. So Q1 was off the hook. And for me, I was going through this transition of feeling alone, not just professionally, but personally. And sometimes that's not easy for people to deal with. A lot of people were dealing with feeling alone, job loss, come March, April time frame. But we're gonna talk about that and rewind Jay's Chronicles and let them tell us what happened in Q1 with feeling alone. Let's check it out. We go through periods in our life where we feel very lonely, feeling as though that we are here by ourselves. I think about COVID again and think about all the things that have happened. It's been a quite a big rippling effect. Divorce, job loss, relationships, careers, violence, gang violence, protest, police brutality, Suicide, homicide, alcoholism, drug use, all these things. And there's an underlayer, there's an underbelly that we don't talk about being alone. Do you ever feel alone? Do you ever feel alone? I know I do. There's certain times when I feel like I'm just here by myself. The things that I'm going through. Although I have family and friends, sometimes that feeling of being alone is, is real. We think about celebrities and people that have super extraordinary lives, and we're on the outside looking into their lives. And we don't recognize that oftentimes they're alone. They're very much alone. They say the higher up you go in life, the more alone you are, the less friends you have, the less people to support you you have. This is for real. I feel like being alone sometimes can be a disease. I don't know what it's called, but maybe it's called lonely or loneliness or loneliism. It's some disease that they should come up with called being alone. And sometimes it's a virus. I'm literally looking forward to this week. It's going to be quite medicinal. I know it's oftentimes a topic we don't want to talk about, but let's peel the Band-Aid off of this thing and get into it. The good, the bad, the ugly of being alone. So that was by far one of our most popular topics, feeling alone that week. We talked about being lonely, lonesome. I went through all those stages. Have you? Maybe some people are. I know this is the holiday season. A lot of people are feeling alone. A lot of people have lost dear family, friends, and now is a lonely time. So I, my heart goes out to you. It really does. And my prayers are, be, are with you. But as I was transitioning through that time, that whole pendulum for me, that shift, I was thinking about all the reasons why things didn't work out for me. And I couldn't take ownership of any of it. I kept blaming everybody else, everything around me. But I wasn't given the best version of myself 
but I was so stuck in my head and my pride got in the way so many times. You ever have your pride get in the way? Where you just think you're the best thing since sliced bread and nobody else does? Sometimes our mind plays tricks on us when our pride gets in the way and we're gonna talk about that coming up. I want you to check this one out because my pride was killing me and maybe you can learn some nuggets from this one. Pride of a lion and today we're gonna talk about don't let your pride get in your way. So what happens when your pride gets in your way? Have you ever had a moment where your pride got in your way? Where you were just so stubborn to do something that was going to be the best for you, but because you didn't like somebody or because you didn't like what was given to you, that you let your pride get in the way. I've had various examples throughout my life where I let my pride get in the way, where I lacked humility and gratitude. And these are going to be some more topics that we're going to continue to talk about over the upcoming weeks. But I honestly believe when you combine pride with humility and gratitude, that is the trifecta. That is the trifecta, the trio that he wants us to have to get everything that he, re he wants us to receive. If those are out of balance, you will not receive all the gifts that he has inside of you. So once I was able to get my pride out the way, I had to take a step back and think about what do I want to do? What do I want to do? What do I want to do for the next 5, 10, 15, 20 years, God willing? I feel like I want to create my life, but I don't know how to do it. I don't know the how. I had already started hunting for a four flat building, but you know how difficult it is to buy a four flat building with no gig? And then you got COVID, a pandemic, and the banks are shriveling up. You know how many times I got spit out? So we're going to talk about what it means when you're committed to something and then all of a sudden you reach a point where there's, there's these roadblocks that are in front of you. I think it's going to be an awesome time. Let's talk about how this floor flat building turned out. I think you'll like this one. Now the most important part, are you ready to be committed? It's a simple question. Are you ready to be committed to that commitment? Because then and only then will it happen for you. Oftentimes we create buts because we wonder about the how. It's not about the how, it's about now. Don't worry about the how. Because once you take that step to commit towards it, I promise you, doors will open, answers will come to you that you could never imagine. There's one person on the committee that I didn't give credit to yesterday, and that's the most high. He should be your first person on your committee because he is going to create a lot of opportunities for you when you don't know the how. I can't tell you enough. As I've gone through this period post McDonald's, as I've gone through this period in COVID, there's a lot of answers that I didn't know. How am I going to do this? How am I going to acquire a property without having a full-time gig in front of me? It's him and me making that commitment saying, I'm going to do this. You see why I'm dressed up today? Because today is a celebration. Today I'm closing on the property. Today I'm closing on the property of my dreams because I committed to it. I tangled with this thing. I've been in a fight with this thing. All these people telling me, no, you can't get that. You don't have a job with McDonald's anymore. How are you going to get that? It's a four-family property. How are you going to do that? Because I committed to it, and I never quit. Relentless days of trying to figure out how to get funding for this property. And I promise you, I am so happy and proud to be here because I talked to him about it and said, that's what I want. I don't know how, but I need you to get that for me. And opportunities have presented themselves. You see this? This is Execu Mask. This is the next opportunity that's coming into a theater near you. I don't know how I'm going to make it happen, but I'm walking through that door because I'm committing to it. You see what I'm saying to you? It's about making that decision to commit to something. You don't have to have all the answers. So now that we know that you're committed as you walk into 2021, what are you going to do with it? 
I knew that I was committed to the four flat building. I wrote it down. But then I had some other commitments that I wanted to really accomplish as well. But it's all about speaking them into existence. You wrote them down, so I'll give you one check for that. The next check is you gotta start speaking it on a daily basis. And the one thing that I knew as I was trying to commit myself in owning this four flat building, I wanted to make sure I was speaking it into existence every day. It's going to happen for me. I will own this building. I will own this building. I know I will own this building. I was speaking it every day. And then finally, guess what happened? It came into fruition. So you have to take it from the next level of committing to, I want to own my life. I want to own whatever that goal is and be relentless about it. And we're going to talk about it one last time. This is the last clip that we'll share for the day in 2020 on owning your life and owning what's in front of you for 2021. Check it out. As we conclude the week, I haven't really told you what it means to own something, what the acronym means. And it doesn't mean the Oprah Winfrey Network. It means own one now, own one now. That's what own means on Jay's Chronicles. 2020 has been a very tumultuous year for a lot of us. Love loss, family, friends dying, job loss. All of those things I've experienced both directly and indirectly. I'm sure you have too or have friends that have as well. What I'm telling you is the focus is on the last letter of the word own now. We have a responsibility to create the life that the people that have been lost or didn't get the chance to. You understand? I take this very seriously. We have an opportunity. Our lives have been spared for a reason. Own it. Own it now. Own it now. I'm telling you to own it now. And it's not rocket science. It's just four key things I want you to focus on. Just start. Just start. I don't care what it is. It's never going to be perfect. You're never going to have enough money. You're never going to have enough time. There's always going to be something else pulling at you. But you got to start. You got to start. It's never going to be perfect. The second one. Focus on those things that you are great at and outsource the things you're good at. You only got so much time. I know time is limited, it's precious, but there's certain things that you're great at and certain things that you're just good at. Outsource those things. You got kids, family, they have skills that you don't have so you can focus on what it takes to make your business, whatever it is you're trying to push forward, thrive. Focus on those things that you're great at and outsource the things that you are good at. Hopefully that makes sense to you. The third piece, make sure you have an accountability team. Somebody that can hold you accountable, I know I do. I got a couple of people that are constantly holding me accountable. Jay, did you do this today? Jay, what about this? Jay, what about that? Did you do something on social media? Did you go check on this? Did you pay those bills? Did you push this thing forward today? Who's going to hold you accountable? You can't do it by yourself. And last but not least, grow with it. Grow with it. Just grow with it. Again, as you grow and start taking steps, you're going to learn things. You're going to start to learn things. People are going to come across your path to help you get to the next level. As long as you sit on the sidelines looking in, you'll never grow anything. Again, I hope you like these four steps I shared with you. I hope you enjoyed this week. I hope you want to own it. I hope you want it. And do it now. Do it now. And I want to hear from you when you want that thing that you decided right now to own. So there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Ownership. It's up to you now. This is a pivotal time. Things will never be the same. Do you understand that? I hope you realize that. And the people that are willing to commit and own their lives are the ones that are going to reap the rewards. It's going to be a lot of people sitting on the sidelines, never getting up off the couch, waiting for somebody to give them something. I want to make sure as we've spent this year together, 
that you never let fear or the fact that you're alone stop you. You never let your pride get in the way of you accomplishing what's in front of you. And especially being humble and showing gratitude and all the things that you're doing. I want you to write things down and commit to them. And the next thing I want you to speak them into existence and say that you want to own it. These four things are very important as you're writing those New Year's resolutions down and making sure that they happen. The next time I talk to you this time next year, I'm going to ask you these same questions. Did you do these four things? Think about it. I've enjoyed this time this year. We're going to pivot next year and rebrand Jay's Chronicles into something that's called Motivated Matters because I feel very dearly that being motivated matters. And there's a lot of matters going on around us that motivate us. So we're going to showcase and highlight those and focus on that. And I wish you a wonderful 2021. Thank you for being here with me. It means a lot. And I look forward to seeing you in 2021. And I wish you a year of prosperity, peace, love, safety, and happiness. Y'all take care, everybody. Get you some. I'll see you in 2021. Take care.